Hartford for the win! Yes! Yes! Deep strike, got the big man, Crabtree pulls free, and touchdown, Red Raiders! Ten for three, right between the eyes! Welcome to the Onside Kick, your weekly roundtable discussion of the biggest stories in sports, entertainment, and much more. Your host, Dave Oster, Ricky Widmer, will break down the world of basketball, baseball, and football. What are you doing, Dragons? Did you not get the memo? There it goes, can go upstairs. And get ready, because here comes the onside kick. Hello and welcome to the onside kick. Ricky Widmer here along with Dave Oster, and we're here to break down the national championship in this year's Final Four, and Dave, I just want to get right to it. The one big thing I thought played key into this game, you have Anthony Davis, only six points. Yeah. But he had 16 rebounds and six blocks. Yeah, Anthony Davis didn't even have a point until the fourth quarter. It was just a really weird, weird feeling of a game because the whole thing was he was just this monster on defense, and he had some assists too, but he just couldn't find the net when he needed to. He ended up getting most of his points off of free throws at the end of that game. But all around, this guy just dominated the game from beginning to end. Well, and I think at the beginning of the game, you said that he didn't have a point until the fourth quarter. I think what played into that and helped Kentucky get the win over Kansas was Kid Gilchrist, 4-for-4 four four to start the game. Yeah, he started out hot, and Teague actually did a lot of damage. He kept with a fast break. They kept trying to you know, make sure Davis was covered. And they left the lane open for Teague over and over. He just punished him early. And the one thing, looking at the other side of the ball, Kansas, Dave, in our last video, we got a little comments from the viewers saying that we don't know how to pronounce this guy's name. Is it Whitney? Is it Whitney? Is it with E? I don't know. <laughs> but either way, he got shut down by Anthony Davis, and they lost the game. Yeah, he had four blocks. I mean, it's okay block number, but points, he just got murdered. He only had five points tonight. And you could just tell down low, he didn't have any any control of what was going on in that paint. Well, I mean, more importantly, Kansas, how did they win their former games in the tournament? They would get the ball down low, score in the paint. Against Kentucky, you can't do that. And that's why Anthony Davis had six blocks. Right after Davis would get the block, Kentucky looking to push. They got it to Teague. They got it to Lamb. They got it to Kid Gilchrist. They won the game. Yeah, they had great ball movement around the court. I mean, you'd see them bring the court. You'd see them bring the ball down the court and get off like three, four passes every time. They're always looking for the open man, and they were just nailing the threes tonight too. I know you said. I think we were seven minutes left in the first half. <laughs> Kentucky nails a three. This kid saying, "Dagger, game's over." They're, they're, at the at the time, they were up, you know, pretty big. I think that was their thirty-first point they had just scored. They are probably like 12, 14. Was that when they were up by 18? Not quite yet. They, they, they pushed it a little further later on. But, no, I mean, it, it just seemed like the whole momentum of this game was Kentucky. And it almost got disinteresting, you know, towards the middle mm -hmm. of the game. It's like, oh, this is a blowout. That's no fun. But Kansas really brought it back at the end. Like, they came on an 8-0 run. And Kentucky got shut down to one field goal in the last seven minutes for the start of the second half. See, and Dave, for the listeners, if they don't know you very well, which I'm assuming they don't. Probably not. You are complete dis... You hate the Cinderella team. Absolutely do. And last year's game, we had Connecticut versus Cinderella. I'm going to call them a Cinderella and Butler. Let's compare last year's to this year's. What did you think? Did you like last year's game with Kemba Walker against Butler? Or were you more intrigued with the Kentucky-Kansas and the big powerhouses going together? Kentucky-Kansas brought a whole different start. Because it's just, like you said, they're powerhouses. They're staples of the tourney. And this past weekend in the Final Four, they had the highest rating since, like, 1995. So that shows right there. People really do want to see the top teams play. Cinderella stores are great in the first and second round, but... We don't want to watch them make it to the Final Four, make it to the championship game. And the one thing, kind of to pull in a different topic that's been going on in the NBA today, a lot of people kind of questioning Michael Jordan's legacy because of his kind of success, you could say, 
with the Bobcats. You know what I'm hoping, Dave? What success? I am hoping, yeah, what success. But I'm hoping that the Bobcats get the first round pick because I want to see this kid, Anthony Davis, play with Kemba Walker. The unibrow. I'll yeah. That would be a scary... I mean, the team itself isn't very good, and you can tell right away just by looking at them. But Kemba's got talent, that's obvious, and they've got a couple little pieces here and there, but they don't have, like, an entire team. So if they did pick up Davis, great pickup. This guy's a monster on defense. His scoring, usually he will put up some points, and that was an exception. He was able to play more of a defensive role and let everybody else take over on offense. But no, I think it'd be a great pickup. Well, that does it for the onside kicks coverage of the Final Four. Make sure to check out our Facebook. Somewhere over here is the link to that. And also everything is down below. And check out our website, theonsidekick.webs.com. Good night, everyone. Hope you enjoyed your national championship festivities. Night.